Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys what your future home monthly expenses will be. Now there's a simple abbreviation for your home monthly expenses, and that's called your PITI. PITI stands for the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And these are the monthly payments that you're going to have to make no matter what. Like no matter how efficiently you own a rental property, no matter how much you reduce the cost of the expenses, no matter what, you're going to have to pay the principal and interest for your mortgage, the taxes, and insurance. So the first thing that I like to do is when I'm doing research, the number one thing is you have to know where you're going to be buying a property. Now there's so many different factors and we're not going to get into how to determine your target market in this course but if you think about yourself like where do you want to live where are you trying to buy a home where are you trying to buy a property so the first thing that i like to do is i like to go on zillow so zillow is a great website where you can go research properties you can find out a little bit about the home some property information and obviously if the property is on sale and how much it's being listed for so let's go on zillow and let's look up a random city so we'll look up arlington texas and again type in whatever city that you're actually interested in looking in okay we're just doing this as an example for you you can do some filtering here. So for example, I don't really need a super large home and I might not have a large price point. So maybe I want something under 300,000. So let's just put 300,000 here and let's just see what we can get. So scroll around and you know, we're gonna pick a random house. So let's pick this home right here. Now we get to this property. Okay, you can see this is a random home I chose, right? I did no analysis here. I don't know if this property is good or not. It's a random property found on Zillow. And it's a three bed, two bath, 1500 square foot. So this could be a pretty good starter home. 289,000, that's a pretty decent price. So if we look at the details about this property. You can see the photos down here. It's listed for $289,000, three bedroom, two bathroom, 1,582 square foot. So pretty good, pretty good value for a decently sized home. On the bottom zill here, you can see some more information like this is a single family residence. It's not a condo or townhome. This is built in 1979. It has central heating and central air conditioning. Two parking garage spaces and a 7,230 square foot lot. So again, this is a pretty decent sized property for the price. Some information about the listing. And if you keep going down here, you can kind of also see like where has the price been over the years. So it's been slowly climbing up. And then, you know, in late 2022, pricing has started to soften a little bit. And here you can also see the property taxes. So, you know, property tax here is at $4,000 for an assessed value of 184. So if you do the calculations and you find the property taxes divided by the assessed value, it comes out to be around 2.2% property taxes in Texas are kind of high and you're basically going to be paying around 2.2% of the value. So if you buy it at around 300,000, then expect to pay 6,000 plus a year on your property taxes. Now the cool thing about Zillow too, is they also have some monthly cost estimators and it usually looks like this. You can kind of see how much everything will cost and what your monthly cost will be right here. So if you just want a high level view, then you can use this. But in this video, I want to kind of go deeper into numbers if you want to do your own research. So for the first thing is principal and interest. There's a mortgage calculator right here. You can also go on Google and just type in mortgage calculator and find something like this, where you put in the loan amount, what kind of loan you're trying to get, as well as the interest rates. So interest rates change every day as well. So let's go ahead and do this exercise. If you type in mortgage rates today, you can see what's your approximate loan amount, how much down payment you're getting, what state you're doing, and your credit score. Now everything changes, right? On a day-to-day -day basis, these numbers go up and down. And if you change your loan amount, right, it kind of goes a little bit higher, if the loan's too low. If you have a larger loan amount, then now you're in the jumbo realm, and so you have a lower interest rate. Again, everything depends on these different factors. So you have to actually talk to a loan officer to get an actual quote this is what you do in the very beginning stages of looking at a house just shop around google things and use these as the numbers to plug into your formulas to see if they work out for you again here's your credit score if you have a higher credit score then interest rates go down if you have a lower credit score then interest rates go up so in this case let's say we're at a 760 so we're almost around seven percent is that high yeah it could be high now you may find other lenders who are offering a lower interest rate and you may be tempted to just go with them but i'm here to warn you a little bit about how the mortgage industry actually works just because the rate they offer you is lower the total cost may not be lower because they might have some extra fees hidden in to bring that overall rate down. So as an example, let's look up some rates. I'm just randomly scrolling down, but this one company here is offering a 6% interest rate, which is really good, especially compared to the 7% we saw earlier. But if you scroll to the right a little bit, you see that you have around $2,000 in total fees. So that's one point to note. Better has an APR of 6.125%. The interest rate is also 6.125% and total fees are zero. So this seems actually pretty decent. Keep going down and let's see if we can find something even better. Wow, new American, 5.49% interest rate. So this might seem really good. But then again, look at the fine print. Total fees, 5829 Now, there are definitely companies out there that do have lowest rates, lowest fees. You have to do the work to find them. But I just wanted you to be aware that this is how mortgage companies advertise themselves. They like to throw a small interest rate in your face to make you believe that you're getting the best deal. But on the back end, they're charging you points to bring on those rates. So you always have to compare apples to apples, ask them what the total fees are, try to get them to all be around the same fees, and then compare the rates. Rates are not everything. Okay, so let's go back to our Zillow example. So this property here, you have a purchase price of two 
289,900. You're gonna put 20% down and you're gonna get 30 year fixed, but the interest rate is 7%. So let's change that here, 7%. And you can see that the total principal and interest payment has increased by a little bit. So next up is mortgage insurance. In this case, because you are paying for this property with 20% down, there's no mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is the PMI we talked about in earlier lectures, and it's only applicable if you have under a 20% down payment. So we're gonna leave that zero for here. Property taxes here, we're calculated by Zillow at 2.34% tax rate. Again, to find out your property tax rate, you need to go on your county's website. Property taxes vary by location. Like property taxes in California may be 1%, property taxes in Florida may be 3%, and then properties in one county may be 3.2%, properties in another county may be 2.8%. So you have to compare it to the actual county that you're buying your property in. So just go to Google again, type in your property tax rate, and you'll get some different results. In this case, based on my research and looking at the different numbers here, I'm pretty confident in saying that the property tax rate will be around 2.2% of the value. So I'll say 2.2%. Now, homeowner's insurance is also a little bit tricky. There's homeowner's insurance for you as a personal resident, and there's homeowner's insurance if you're buying it as a rental property. These are gonna have very different prices. If you're buying a property for yourself where you're living on the premises, then your insurance payments will be a lot lower than if you're just owning it as a rental property. Because naturally, when it's not your own home, more things are likely to happen, more repairs, more issues than if it's your own property. Now, to be precise with this number, you should get an actual quote. You can get many quotes online, and if you're getting rentals insurance, we actually like a company called Steadly. Steadly is a nationwide insurance provider and insurance broker, so they'll be able to help you no matter where your property is. But again, they're more catered towards if you're buying it as a rental property. So I'll give you a quick tutorial of how Steadly works. So first, go on the Steadly website with the link down below. I type in the address. So I'm just copy and paste this one right here. All right, and you just fill in the information here. It can automatically pull most of the data for you, so you don't type in everything. And here's where you're going to choose the different features. So is this a long-term rental where you have a tenant there for six plus months? Typically, renters stay in a property for at least 12 months. Or is it a short-term rental? Like you're doing this on Airbnb, you know, one month at a time. Choose how long you're going to be. Longer-term tenants are generally going to have cheaper insurance policies. Short-term tenants are going to have more expensive policies. It is fully occupied, meaning that this is rented out for 12 months at a time. Or is there some vacancy? So usually with short-term rentals, there is going to be some vacancy. But let's assume this is a normal rental property. Press continue. Are you buying this as a person or are you buying this as an LLC? Again, most of you guys are probably going to buy as the person. So just fill in your information here. So this is how much coverage you need for the property in case the whole thing burns down or a hurricane comes and blows everything away. Typically, the banks want you to have a property insured for at least the amount they're lending you. So in this case, if the bank is giving you an 80% loan, then you should have at least 80% of the home's value as your coverage limit. Of course, the more coverage you have, the more expensive this insurance policy is gonna be. Over here on the right side, they say they recommend 75%. In this case, let's do 80%. So we go back to our old number, that's 2319. Then fill in your information, and then they wanna ask, what was your past insurance claims? So if you're someone who has claimed insurance in the past, there is a higher chance that you probably might claim again in the future, so they're probably gonna ding you on that as well. I haven't had any insurance claims, so I'm gonna put zero. And then I'll calculate a quote for you. This process is really fast, so just chill for a little bit, and you'll spot a quote. So here we can see that our quote for this rental property would be $2,655 a year. You can either pay that all up front or you can have it be paid in monthly installments. You also have the ability to change different things like do you want personal property insured? Do you want additional living costs? And you can click on these little question marks if you don't understand what these things are. And Steadily is really cool because they'll actually assign you to a live agent. So once you fill this out, someone will actually text you and call you in case you have more questions about your policy. And if your lender has any specific requirements for insurance, you can just connect the two together and they'll talk and give you the policy that you actually need. So this is good for now. We'll take this number 2,655 and go back to Zillow. HOA fees are also known as HOA dues. So they're the homeowner's insurance fees that you have to pay if the property is in an association. In this case, this is a single family. There's no association attached to it. So there are no HOA dues. And we're not going to worry about utilities for right now, just because there's so many other things we have to worry about. And there are ways that you can lower your utility bill. For example, you can use less heat during the winter, or you can turn your AC down lower during the summer, turn off all the lights in the house, use less water, all that kind of stuff. So we'll leave a blank for now. And if you add everything up, you can see that your total monthly cost is $2,296. And that's by adding up your principal and interest, your property taxes, and your homeowner's insurance. Again, P I T I. Principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. These are the fees you have to pay no matter what. So $2,296. So those are going to be your approximate monthly cost for owning this property. Take this number, multiply it by six, and that'll be your reserves for holding on to this property. All right, so we're going to take this number and carry on to the next lecture where we go over the homework assignment. See you in the next one. Take care.